Today, Republicans are so afraid of democracy that they want to disenfranchise predominantly black voters who have been disenfranchised for as far back as when black people were enslaved in the United States of America. This has nothing to do with election integrity. This is about racial control. And this is not new. So DC statehood is not about one party or the other. It's about freedom. And it's about political self-determination. It's about overcoming the white supremacist violence of voter suppression in this here historically black city. The hateful, divisive rhetoric is historical as per redlining. And the anti-immigrant sentiment is directly connected to the Great Replacement Theory. Now, I know none of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle will admit to being racist. And I don't think they are. But when you look at the rhetoric and you hear the talking points and look at the legislation that put forward, what are we to say? The gentleman will suspend. It's very difficult to sit here and listen to arguments in the long history of this country of using scripture and weaponizing and abusing scripture to justify bigotry. White supremacists have done it. Those who justified slavery did it. Those who fought against integration did it. And we're seeing it today. And sometimes, especially in this body, I feel as though if Christ himself walked through these doors and said what he said thousands of years ago, that we should love our neighbor and our enemy, that we should welcome the stranger, fight for the least of us, that it is easier for a rich man, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get into a kingdom of heaven. He would be maligned as a radical and rejected from these doors. Under the Biden-Harris administration, the Department of Labor fin uh, finalized a rule reversing a Trump era regulation that prevented retirement plan fiduciaries from considering ESG data when seeking to maximize investment returns for plan participants. The Securities and Exchange Commission is also working on rulemakings to require publicly traded companies to disclose climate risk information and make ESG disclosures more standardized, more consistent, and more reliable. When you say I'm anti-woke, when you talk about wokeness, you're saying I'm anti-black and I don't want black people to speak up for themselves. I don't want equality and justice for black folks. So whatever else is being thrown around, unless you are saying I'm racist, white supremacist, and I'm bigoted, stop talking about wokeness. And you can't tell me that I'm wrong because I'm from the very movement where this came about. Don't let a fascist tell you what we, being woke means. What do you want us to discuss? The Donbass in Crimea. I don't know if I know much about that. I need to get into the details and learn some more about that. Yeah. Do you, you know what those are? Uh, no, tell me. What? Educate me. What, well, let me ask you this. What, what's your opinion on the, the war for Ukraine? Do you support U.S. aid to the war in Ukraine? Uh, yes. Why do, you, why do you support that? Because Putin's a madman and uh, we got to stop him. But uh, I'm anti-war in general. Okay. All right. But, all right. but so just so you know, the Donbass and Crimea, those are the central regions in Ukraine, uh -huh. which were in dispute and which started the war over those regions. Okay. So. Okay. Good to meet you. When Republicans talk about election integrity, they're really talking about voter suppression. They're talking about carrying on the legacy of slavery and Jim Crow by actively disenfranchising black and brown communities through legislation like the American Confidence and Elections Act to undermine voter access and fair and impartial election administration.